show you just because it was kind of fun. We put, I made up this sign because Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation is on the Memorandum of Understanding, which instigated this whole land exchange. And so we made copies and handed the Memorandum of Understanding. This is what was all put together to make this land exchange take place. So we wanted to have Rocky Mountain Elk have some accountability. To, and they told me when this first started that we didn't have elk in our area. So there's the elk that we don't have. And there's pictures down there, there's three of them. Those, that picture was taken like a month and a half ago and it's a herd of 165 elk in the area up for exchange. So those are the elk we don't have. In the area of Benoit County up for exchange. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by coincidence. And what we also did is we handed out a list of phone numbers and contacts and you guys will know all the names on here and including Rocky Mountain, and we're on the back, we're the last ones on here. And we pretty much handed that with the Memorandum of Understanding, and it connects the memorandum, the people who signed on it, with this. And then, we, of course, we needed to let people know about what Seth, so we did put him up for grabs, and there's pictures down there that are on the table going this way, and that is the booth that we did. So you can actually see what we actually put together. And the one corner has got a big stop sign. That's like our corner of Blixa. It was our corner of Blixa. And which we put up information about him and some of the crooked things he's done. So, and this was our handout. And all it was is just, I just basically took little excerpts from newspapers and stuff and printed it out, put it on one thing so people could really find out about who he was. <coughs> Some of the other papers that we put out was information so people could learn about the land exchange through like the retirees. There's what, three of them that wrote up stuff that we handed out to people so people could learn about it. So anyhow, that's what we did there. And then um, on the table on the one side, on the left hand side is a bunch of these maps. You guys are welcome to take a look at those if any of you are unfamiliar with the areas that are up for exchange. So we had those out too. This one's really interesting. <coughs> if you get a chance, you might want to look. We got this from the Army Corps of Engineers. It's kind of an eye opener. Look at this map and then look at this one of the Dorshack Dam Reservoir area. We didn't know it, but one of the parcels they knew, the guys who work for the Army Corps of Engineers knew nothing about this land exchange, nothing. And they have land that borders it. So I grabbed their map here and in our map and we started comparing and there's another state park that's adjacent to one of these parcels. So, of interest anyhow. Then I gotta, I gotta explain one other thing down here too. So you're welcome to take a look at this when you get a chance. Last year, in 2009, the Forest Service, every year they set up a booth at this show. These, all these are pictures of their booth. It was pretty amazing. They put up just a tremendous display. And I believe their booth display size was 10 by 20. You have to take a look. There's a lot of pictures of it. This was their booth this year. That's their whole booth. One table, one board. The only handouts they had were these. All the rest of them said, do not take. They knew that we were gonna be there, because we told them. We were just, you know, we told them. We said, we bought a booth at the outdoor show. We're gonna be set up there. You have to take a look at the pictures. It was kind of interesting to walk down there and then find, you know, their representation was horrible. It was unmanned, so nobody could question the land exchange at all. So it's kind of interesting. You'll have to take a look. It doesn't take a lot of self-explanatory. You can just see it on your own. But the Forest Service was, <coughs> I felt, really, really neglectful to the public to not be there to respond to the people. And the poor uh, Army Corps of Engineer guys, their uniforms kind of look like Forest Service dudes. <laughs> 
<laughs> I couldn't even tell you how many times they got hit up for this. They're like, what is going on over there? You know, what's this land exchange about? And they're like, we don't know anything about it ourselves. But yeah, the guys finally, they came over and were asking us about it. Because they said they kept getting people going mad at them. And it didn't have anything to do with them. But they, it's like the people told us there's no one over there at the Forest Service booth to talk to. Last year it was all manned. Every year it's been manned. They've had tons of handouts, everything. And this year, that's what we ended up with. Um, I didn't have that. <laughs> we did have an amazing amount of response on that show. We had piles of people that were, the general public was outraged. You know, it's about the best to explain it. They were, um, a lot of people still didn't know about it. And we had a lot of people sign up to request the EIS. Our booth was not even in comparison as far as uh, popularity. We were often just bombed. And we had, what, four people at all times? Three one time for a couple minutes, but we generally had at least four people in our booth the whole time, and we were busy. And we could have actually used more, but there's only so much you could do. <laughs> yeah. So, there you go. And we also asked people to sign uh, requests for the yeah. environmental impact statement. And okay. selected nearly 200 of them that we were going to take. There were others that people took off on their own. on the actual exchange within our group, you know, like land for land and, you know, basically stop, well, totally stopping it, is what our focus has been. And so we haven't really focused on what a horrible person this is that we're dealing with. And the people, they were hitting us up about it. They wanted to know, who owns this land? Who is this guy? And if they didn't know, you know, a lot of people knew about him. So that was kind of neat, you know. So because we, before the, before we did the booth, we had, were trying to, you know, not, um, not be obnoxious about who actually owns the land. But it, he kind of opened himself up to it because so many people kept asking us about him, and they wanted to know. So we went ahead and we hung up a lot of stuff about him and just let people know. So we went ahead and did it. So that was the latest of what we've been doing and what we focused on the whole last year has been getting more public involvement, telling other people about it, and asking people to request the draft environmental impact statement so that they will be notified and have the chance to comment on the phone. Um, I'd like to ask Harvey Neese and Tom Trail to talk about their conversations. Uh, you want to go first, Tom? Or? Well, I think Harvey should go first because I came in about midway okay. uh, on conference phone conversation and I'll, I'll fill in. Well, I'll just uh, <coughs> give you some of the background. I might tell you for some of you who don't know me, I, I worked in developing countries most of my life and lived in many of these countries. And uh, many of them were dictatorships, uh, communist systems like the Soviet Union, Vietnam. And one of the things that was uh, a characteristic of all of them was that the people didn't match to the government. In other words, whatever I was doing to try to put together, people just didn't matter. And I've been seeing some of the same characteristics right now down here at this level. I didn't think I ever would. But I'll just read some of the some notes I wrote up here. I met with two aides of Senator Reich and Crapo in Lewiston last week. For the first time, uh, their discussion entailed the purchase of the upper lot salt line. They have not brought this up before. They always uh, 
kind of seemed to slither away from uh, purchasing it. Eight seemed to understand or accept this is the best alternative to the exchange. The eights asked for the letter to Brazil to be sent to them, given to them ASAP. They want to get this to the senators. And uh, so they can get support from the two senators. The eights were asked for senators to make support public TV papers. I even jotted out on paper what I thought the senators should or could say about this. And basically it's, I will support what the majority of the people most affected by this uh, uh, change, I will support them. And they didn't have any objections to it. The age they didn't seem to have a problem. But I said, this has got to be made publicly. Because nobody knows what they uh, support or if they support it. Rocky Mountain Health Foundation would be expected to pay an amount to Idaho County for about five years in lieu of lost property taxes to this purchase storage process. I haven't talked to them on this subject yet, the Rocky Mountain Health Foundation, but I've heard from someone that they had uh, verbally agreed to this if it was a purchase was made, but I haven't been able to verify. Incidentally, I found that the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation chapters in the area are, doesn't seem, don't seem very interested in discussing or talking about the, I, call, I called two of the chapters, uh, presidents or heads or whatever you want to call them. And they kind of talked to me on the phone. They said, okay, we'll, we'll get back to you, get back. I left messages, never heard from you. So I don't know if they just, everything the uh, Missoula bunch wants in the Rocky Mountain Elk, but even though they hunt and fish in the area, they want. Uh, the aid says their senators will need support from other legislators on the resource subcommittee as Ron Wyden of Oregon and Barbara Antrell of Washington. And also especially uh, Senator Baucus from Montana. Now, what I was told I wasn't able to verify this, but I was told by Senator Baucus at one point, I put these 39,000 acres into his bill over there on this large purchase of private land that the government, uh, I think it's finished now, it's completed. He had had that in the bill to purchase these Locksaw, upper Locksaw land, but I didn't understand why it was taken out. But he wanted to do it. I was, I was told anyway by these people. So uh, Senator Baucus in Montana, he'd been involved in this, and he said, we need his support. Um, I called Senator, or called former Governor Andrus's office uh, yesterday and this morning. I missed him yesterday on a tour this morning to see if we could get his name on this uh, paper uh, because uh, I think that would help as far as sports is concerned. Uh, communicate with the Nature Conservancy and uh, they're having a meeting this week to discuss putting their names on this uh, letter. I don't know what the politics involved in that or whatever. New London, he came up to see us a few months ago and we talked about another situation, not about this one. And uh, he said he's meeting and uh, they will decide on whether they will put their name of support on here. Here's my feeling. There needs to be some drastic changes in regulations on this selling and trading of public lands so that a single medium level government official does not have authority to say yes or no in selling and trading in public lands. When I first heard about this and went to that first scoping session meeting in Moscow, I thought, there's something going on here now. You gotta remember, I, I got paid to be suspicious for 40 years dealing in these countries. I, was in. I had to figure out who's going to be, who's going to want money under the table. How do we get around them? How do we work through and get through with our project? So after I went to that school session, I went down and had a one-on-one -on, -one on Tom Riley, who was in the uh, menu. Got across the table from me. First question: 
see uh, Rick Rozell and talk to him, and I was pretty impressed with him compared to the last Fire Service supervisor. And here's what he told me about it. I, I asked him, I said, what does it take to get you to stamp no action on this? Because, and first I asked him a question, I said, uh, do you believe that, uh, or disbelieve that the majority of the people up here do not want this trade? He said, Harvey, I haven't heard one person tell me the farthest I said, okay, what does it take to get you to stamp no action? What does, what does the public have to do? He said, well, first of all, 
He says, I am not for this exchange. And he says, I don't understand how I got this far. I don't know how it got, I know I don't have to get this far, but there's certain people working on it that shouldn't be. He says, but if I stamp not, no action on this, which will cut this out, which he, he would he like to do. In fact, he said, I would do that if it wasn't an exchange, if it was just a purchase. But he says, in order, he says, I believe that the Forest Service should have control of that 39,000 acres of alternate block of land down on the upper lot saw. But if I stamp no action, everything stops, and we have to start over from zero. But if I hit purchase, which he said I want to do, uh, no, it won't be no action, but it will be purchase of the lock saw lands. He said, then we can continue this on. We're at this stage. And, but he said, you have to get support of the legislators to do this in order for me to put on there, you know, that we want to purchase it. So, but there is two and a half million, isn't there? That's what I heard, about two and a half million. Is it two or two and a half million? I think it was two million that we saw. It was, it was two million is what we saw. Yeah. And oh. actually, I have the budget in my box. What's the total value of the pro property? Uh, more than that. Um, do you know what the total value is? We don't, we have we're not been able to obtain the actual amount that Lexa paid for it. It's, it, it's, it's very curious to me because I really don't understand how this works, but in 2006, the Nez Perce tried, tried to buy that land. <clears throat> I'm not sure, it, from what I read in the document, it looks like it was at least that much of it, at least 39,000 acres, 40,000 acres. And the price tag at that at the time, well, it was actually more than what what's in the exchange. Um, $10 million. And now, well, in 2005, when Lisa bought it, supposedly, it was $30 million. So it's very confusing. But that's as much as we know. We don't have any crazy the Forest Service is reluctant to say how much is worth it until there is an appraisal. And uh, that's why we have to watch the appraisal process because most of that has been cut already. So there's the value of it in terms of standing timber really is most of the price. What's the appraisal at Fido County? What's the appraisal at Fido County Courthouse? Um, I don't have that right off the top of my head. Maybe <laughs> I remember seeing that number and I just can't remember. Um, <coughs> we had the tax bill, but I'm not sure we have the actual appraisal. Um, citizens and elected officials, but also the various <coughs> sportsmen and other groups that all have a uh, stake in the preservation of and maintaining the police district that, you know, the way it is right now with this very multi-purpose uh, use of it to benefit the, you know, the citizens uh, here and in the U.S. who utilize it. And also, uh, <coughs> I always like to make a comment about <coughs> Mr. Blexa. So he does, you have to give him credit, he owned, he does hold one record that uh, he paid, <clears throat> and the company paid the largest uh, fine in the history of EPA <laughs> and the state of Montana for uh, <clears throat> uh, disregarding uh, uh, 
uh, violating the Clean Water Act with when they went in, in their uh, development, they were there, paid over one and a half million dollars. I'm not sure that's a record that many people would hold up to honor. But he jokingly has joked about that before. What, what time frame are you looking at getting this right around? As soon as possible. And since we've got that, I'm going to, we're now down to the letter, and I'm going to ask Gary McFarland to talk to us about that. I think the letter that I hope maybe everybody that needs a copy has got a copy. <laughs> As you heard here, there's a broad spectrum of interests that don't want to see the exchange. Conservation groups, like I work for, uh, sportsmen's groups, uh, a lot of interests from the broad political spectrum don't like it. I also want to thank our local uh, representatives here, both at the county and at the state level, for coming out in opposition to this land exchange. But rather than just saying no to this, recognizing there is some value to that upper lock saw from a management perspective, right now it's hard for anybody to do anything up there because it's, it literally looks like a chessboard or a checkerboard in square mile sections up there. We thought to, it would be best to put forth a positive alternative and suggest that a uh, purchase be made uh, these lands originally were given to the railroads under the stipulation that railroads be built through there. Well, as everybody knows, Lowell Pass was not chosen for a whole bunch of reasons, mainly uh, physical, uh, for the railroad. But the lands were never given back to the public as they should have been. So we think a purchase is the best uh, option in this case, and we would like to have as many entities government officials to sign onto this letter to uh, Supervisor Brazell. And I've also met with Rick Brazell, and I echo what Harvey and Representative Trail had to say about the, uh, his, his attitudes towards an exchange. He would like to do a purchase, and he just needs to see that there is some movement behind a purchase or a different option other than an exchange. So I'll leave it at that. We would like uh, to, again, get this out as soon as possible. Uh, but if you think it's going to take you a little time, I think we could probably wait. I don't know. I would, don't want to wait too much longer. But if we can wait maybe a week from today, and people can get some um, get sign-ons. Um, I know some organizations, it takes a while to get uh, approval because you have to go through your boards and whatnot. So. That's all I have. Sit, sit, Tom. Where, where is the money coming from? It's in the uh, federal budget. And uh, that's just a cumbersome process. Uh, sometimes, uh, like in Idaho, we use the nature conservation rules and intermediary and rip for some of the property on the Simurai. Are there any groups that are interested in that? Have we talked to? I think Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, just because they would like to see the Upper Locks uh, exchanged, would be interested in this uh, and in facilitating a purchase. I know that they're, they have an interest there. Um, the Nature Conservancy, I'm hoping, and Harvey, you took, you, I don't know if you've been able to get all the blue yet. I, my bet is once this letter goes out and becomes public, then the Nature Conservancy will be very interesting. I was handed a note, market value of $15 million. No, I think she called. Oh, called. Okay. I almost called and asked. So that's Idaho County's assessed value. 